Yeah, so this is, um, you know, in, in most neurofeedback work and actually most research with EEG, they'll use 19 channels. And the easiest way to do that is to use, it's called an electro cap. And so you can see it's a, it's a stretchy cap. This is a medium size. There's different sizes for different size heads. Yep. And with you know, on the inside, kind of built into this, there are, there's actually 20 electrodes. One is um, a reference, it's actually a ground. And then there's 19, they call them active electrodes. Those are the, for the sites that we're gonna be measuring on the, uh, on the surface of the, of the head. There's two eardrops, that's what they call these. Yep. These connect to <clears throat> ear clips. Okay. Whoops, just lost one. Oh, no. Uh, that will be um, connected to uh, Martin's ears. Mm -hmm. And so basically, the, what the software does is then it, it captures all of the data from the linked ears, from all of the electrodes, runs through this rainbow wire, appropriately so. Yeah, right. I was, uh, was going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite appropriate. Into, uh, so this is our amplifier. Right. And so basically this um, amplifies the signal because obviously uh, the electricity produced by the brain is pretty tiny. Right. And then we have to measure it through the skull and through the hair and through the skin and through everything else. Um, so this amplifies the signal and then we have specialized software that records that raw signal. So that's just the raw squiggle lines of everything that we see on all 19 channels. And then sort of post-production, we can clean that data up so that if there's artifact, which are gonna be things created by muscle tension in the face, so eye blinks, swallowing, mm -hmm. things like that that create, create tension in the face, um, one of the things that that does is because every time you use a muscle, it creates electricity. Right. And so these pick that up because they're not specific to brain waves. It'll pick up any electricity. So we have to clean the data file to make sure there's not artifact in there. Um, then we'll analyze it. And then once we analyze it, we can then put numbers to everything. So it's called a quantitative EEG. So rather than just looking at little squiggle lines on a screen, we can break all of those squiggle lines down into each frequency component. So we can look at one hertz, two hertz, three hertz, four hertz, up to about 50 hertz. Um, and then we can put those in bands, which is what people are familiar with, delta waves, theta waves, alpha waves, I see. et cetera. And then we can see how much of each of those there are in each location. Excellent. Then there's a, additional software, it's called S. Loretta, that allows us to extrapolate from the surface data into deeper regions of the brain. So we can actually see deeper structures and what's going on in things like uh, like one of the areas that we're going to be interested in is the posterior cingulate. It's kind of back here but it's a little bit deeper down. It connects the cortex with the limbic system and it's the hub of something called the default mode network. I've heard of that. Which um, is a big deal in, yes. um, well, in everything. Uh, this part of the brain right here uses about 40 percent more energy than any other area. Right. And um, what we know from other research on psychedelic medicines is that it pretty much shuts down uh, during the experience. And so we want to sort of be, we can measure that. We can measure it very directly. Um, so that's stuff that we do in sort of post-production to look and see what happened. Um, and so by getting a baseline recording at the beginning, then we can use that as a comparison, as a reference uh, to compare to other states, whatever that might look like, and see what happened, what changed, sort yeah. of an individual analysis. We map your brain at a baseline, and I'll see what, what's happening there. So it's like, well, I know what your brain's doing, just hanging out, doing nothing, no influences, anything yeah. else. And so then when we look later, you know, if I see something very different, yeah, really obvious. That, yeah. then, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty direct information. What the, uh, what the conducting gel does is helps get a good signal. Um, because again, we have to get all the way through the brain, the brain, all the way through the skull and all the way through the skull. Wow. Yeah, and so, I mean, as far as getting the signal out, and so, you know, this just helps us. That's what, lucky for us, your earlobe's big enough. Got them Buddha ears. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the massage was all about. <laughs> yeah. All right. Looking good, Martin. Good job. These are my new earrings. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So nice. now here's the part. I'm going to line these front electrodes up right on your forehead, best I can. So just keep your forehead relaxed. 
And if you can just kind of reach up and hold that right on your forehead. I'm just going to slide this back. I was hoping we were going to be able to shave him, but... <laughs> <laughs> I brought gel and all. <laughs> okay, is that okay? Yeah. You can let go. Okay. And... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Do I look sciencey? You do, man. You, but it's cool sciencey. Like it, you look like a mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is the part that's unpleasant. So I scratch your head a little bit. Yeah. It's called abrading. So we're basically kind of getting through your hair and wow, <laughs> making sure it's got a nice connection. So my tendency is to go fast and just get it done. What is the the function? Do we know of the default mode network? Well, I mean, it's, it, it does a lot of things, but it's usually talked about as self-referencing or self-processing. Um, so anytime you're thinking about yourself, when you're creating your identity, which is what we do all day long, you yes. know, you, you compare yourself to somebody else, you judge, you have a memory of something that happened to you, you're planning what you're going to do for your day, thinking about your kids, like all of that right. is you thinking about yourself right you know, sort of creating this identity and so that's that's what the default mode network does that's interesting i always would have thought i mean i just assumed that uh that stuff would be in the like the frontal cortex regions. well it involves so the default mode network it, there, this is the hub back right. here and then there's these two areas right here the inferior parietal lobules right and then you've got medial frontal gyrus up here oh, so they're all part of that network i see yeah Yep. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Well, we have good signals everywhere. So this is kind of a impedance map showing us uh, how good the connection is for each of the sensors. And uh, those are actually great connections. Wonderful. Yeah, and this is the raw EEG, so we're not recording just yet. All right, so uh, first we're gonna do eyes closed and we'll just get about a three minute baseline. So during that time, um, so don't meditate, don't go off into space, don't okay. just kind of hang out with your eyes closed. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Shall we begin? Whenever you're ready. And eyes closed is preferred? Um, eyes closed is preferred, but um, you know, you do your thing and I'm going to kind of keep track so that I can kind of make notes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take us up another level.
Nice. So Jeff, let, let's speak some gamma. What, what, let's speak some gamma. Yeah, let's, what happened? Well, so I mean, I was watching, you know, what was happening live, but because of the way that it's set up, when you're breaking it into bands and you're displaying it on that 3D, um, you know, brain image, I can only look at one band at a time. And by band, I mean delta, theta, alpha, you know, mm -hmm. gamma. And so I was kind of flipping around and watching each of them at different times, seeing if what was going on, if there was anything that was particularly standing out. And gamma, which is the fastest brain wave that we measure, really, that we pay any attention to. So it's generally somewhere between 35 and 45 hertz. Um, and, um, you know, again, consistent with a lot of the other research that's been done, gamma tends to increase um, in these when using psychedelic medicines and so that's not a big surprise but what was really interesting watching the pattern was that especially for the beginning part it was all in the right hemisphere i don't know if you saw the one where it was like all red on the one side and the other side was blue right. <laughs> it was very Different. lateralized yeah um, interesting. but then toward the end it started moving around so you know when when martin was you know crying and whatever you know who knows what was going on there but the gamma all moved to the front interesting and then toward the end of the experience it all moved to the back and became balanced so it was balanced mostly in the temporal lobes and occipital lobes but it was like very symmetrical hmm. um, so <clears throat> very interesting so I was trying to keep track of different time signatures of what was going on at various points and so one of the things that I, that I think would be interesting would be to grab different chunks and analyze it separately. Right. Um, and this is part of the issue that I have with research with psychedelic medicine is that they sort of take an experience and go, oh, this is what happened. And it's like, well, you just averaged over 30 minutes of what happened. And it's like, well, a lot of small things happened. Totally, yeah. Um, and so that's one of the issues I have is this like, we need to think about kind of within the experience what's going on and individual differences that you know even though the overall research says one thing it's like well that doesn't s speak to a single person the subjectivity of the right each person right everybody's a little bit different mm. and so that's what I'm really interested in is mm. trying to kind of understand more of the nuance I mean it's great that we have the research we have and I think it's very interesting but like all that gamma stuff you know that's that's nowhere you can't read about that because you know, we know the gamma increases. Mm. But so what? But so what? <laughs> it's interesting uh, uh, that you say that it, it sort of sp spread around after the emotional release. It, uh, and then balanced out and became symmetrical. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It me. is interesting. And mm. so, you know, gamma, gamma is associated with um, kind of a high level integration of information. Um, and so, you would usually see gamma in other research with associated with things like either like being in a flow state um, or like um, people who are experts doing the thing that they're an expert at. I see. So it's like a high level of understanding and integration of something with no effort. Gotcha. So <clears throat> when they when they measure the brains of Buddhist monks doing a compassion meditation, it's gamma. You know, or they measure musicians listening to music. Gamma. You know, it's like this high-level understanding, but you don't have to work at it. Um, you know, it's like you, it's, it's built into your network. And so uh, it looks like that's what happens in some of these states is that, you know, you understand things. This would be the gamma interpretation. It's sort of a high level. Um, it's like your brain's putting all the pieces together, you know. Hmm. Um, and so... Uh, you know that would be one way of thinking about those sort of like bursts of gamma that are happening but again they move which mm -hmm. makes sense because you know you're probably your brain is probably making sense out of things in different ways as the experience develops right in different areas of the brain totally right yeah <laughs> that's one of the things that's really important to understand about I think it's psychedelics in general but especially 5-MeO is that it moves so quickly there's so much going on 
you know, and I'm moving through all different kinds of relationships and experiences within all of that. So I'm not surprised at all to hear that it's moving around into these different places because it's a very different relationship between me as a person, as an individual, and dealing with that relationship to the whole and then the individuals within the whole and then the different frequencies of human experience within the whole and you know hmm. different ways that I'm relating to the energy that I'm experiencing in my body and you know a lot of this that we're doing today is shaped by the fact that we are filming right and so there's an awareness within me of that and understanding that this is something that is it's not just my experience here but this is actually something that looking to communicate this is to an audience and not to perform the communicate is the best word is to communicate what this is what is this range of experience that occurs and then showing up there at the end there really is my sense of recognition that you know I understand I know it hurts I know I know life is hard and still feeling that and allowing that but then also resting in the beauty and the perfection of it and so that's that's where the end is is that okay so there's all of this is that there's this ecstasy there's this personal energy there's individual energy there's collective energy there's pain, there's struggle, there's the horror of being the human being that God filtered down into this little vehicle that is just like, oh fuck, it's so <laughs> fucking hard. And then resolving into the, the beauty and that it is the gift and the, the gift is hard, the gift is not easy. It's not meant to be easy. And <laughs> the beauty that comes with that. Hmm. And it'd be very interesting, actually, to do this uh, to do this another day where there aren't cameras and, yeah. Yeah. and see the spectrum that arises there. You know, because I, I mean, I can tell you, there's more. There's there's much, much, much more. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a whole other level of of kind of what we were talking about is that. So we measure you on one day. Well, if we do this tomorrow It'll in be a different, different set, even if it wasn't a different setting. It's you're in still a different, different place, you're going to have a different experience, there's different things that you're experiencing and working through. And so it's like, so the brain's probably going to look different, you know? And so, again, I think that's, I think that's important. Yeah. Mm. For sure. It was ma as many times as you can get it. I mean, now that we have it on video, it's like as many times as you, get, you can get that read for, you, for right. yeah, just tri triangulate uh, ab abnormalities, I guess, or commonalities within those brain scans right I mean you know yeah. and I suspect there'll be some things that kind of fall into place that are fairly consistent yeah. you know and that's what the other researchers have already established it's like eh, in general this is kind of what happens and it's like okay you know but then what are the nuances and what are the what is the flow and what's the, the pattern that emerges yeah mm -hmm. for and each individual but then even an individual across experiences and it's, it's interesting on this end where at, at aspects of it, just being still, this, st uh, being still, being motionless, is effortless. And then there's other times where I'm really having to concentrate. Okay, you know, tr try and get a snapshot of this, and so don't move, and then be with that, and then just okay, I've just got, I've got to move for a while, you know. And that, even that, is this back and forth thing within me of really and th this is one of the difficulties of working with 5meo the idea of really surrendering to the experience and then also because i am very motivated i do want to do this for science you know and so be still and then go as big as you can being still but it's hard because the the correlation between movement and full embodiment of energy and going as big as you can that those are very closely correlated mm -hmm. so it, it's it's a very interesting dance to do. It's an interesting challenge. I enjoy that. I enjoy a, a good challenge and experiential reality. So, 
Well, you did great. It's yeah. uh, well, it was a lot of th fun. There was one time you hopped up for a second. I was like, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was just because of my legs. Yeah. My yeah. legs. My legs needed a change of venue. <laughs> no, yeah. and, and the movement that 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 you had. You know, we have we have so much recording that it's like I'm gonna have to edit a bunch of that out anyway because of whatever movement and facial tension and stuff like that. But we've got 30 minutes of recording, so what? you know you don't need. Oh, I'm sorry. What what when you're taking notes? I, I notice uh, every few seconds or so you take a note. Is that when something would change in the brain or something would change in Martin's posture? What or a time indication? You're, you're writing down a time indication and then mm -hmm. yeah, all of the above. Uh, yeah. So you know. Eyes open. If he opened his eyes, if his eyes were closed, um, if something seemed to shift um, that seemed important. So if he changed posture, or you know, when when he was crying, or you know, things like that. You know, like time signature, stamp that, so that when I go back through, you know, I can start to kind of pull some of these little pieces apart. That's great. Um, yeah. Mm.